we know that the components of the stress sensor are nothing but the components of the stress vector on the planes of the stress cube along the direction of the basis vectors of the coordinate system and we also saw that uh, there are some special directions like principal directions on which we only have normal stresses and there is no component of shear stress basically shear traction so let's uh, see this with the example of a demo first we'll start with a 2d case in 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 that case the stress cube is nothing but a square and we'll then we move on to uh, how things changes for 3d case so let us shift now to uh, matlab and see a demo for a 2d case So this is a sm small app that I designed in MATLAB's app builder. It takes in this as an input, the 2D stress tensor, and it and it plots the stress cube for this and the Mohr circle. Mohr circle is nothing but another way of representing the components of uh, a, st uh, a stress tensor in all possible orientations. Okay. So stress cube give you, gives you uh, a description of the stress for uh, the stress components for a specific orientation but using more circle you can visualize especially uh, useful in 2d cases for the the, orient, uh, the variation in the stress components for all the possible orientations okay so what you get is in, in 2d the more circle what you get is a circle so every point on the circle represent uh, a specific uh, stress tensor components okay a set of stress components so x axis represent the normal component and the y axis represents the shear component of stresses so as you can see it's 5 10 on this surface that's why you get a point like 5 on y and 10 on x axis similarly if you want to trace another plane simultaneously you get a red point but for simplicity just focus on single point that's green point okay for so for this stress sensor we are starting from this point now as we rotate our plane of rotation okay just focus on this this plane okay as we rotate it there will be two points at which you will get only shear only normal components and the shear, shear component would be zero okay so those two points are this one here and the here where the circle intersect the X axis to so get two points so that is rotated so around somewhere here the shear stress becomes zero okay this angle is precisely 22.5 degree so in this condition what you get is just focus on the green and this plane the normal stress is 7.93 and the shear stress is zero also if you go on rotating it you get another similar point but with higher magnitude of the normal stress okay this point is roughly this is 67.5 degree okay, so at this angle the green points give you a normal component of 22.07 and again the shear component is zero so these two directions okay at uh, this point and at this point are called the principal directions and the corresponding values are called principal values so in 2d we have two principal values and two principal directions okay so we started from here first principal direction was here and and another one was here so you can play with it and you can see how things changes and uh, let us now move on Oh, okay so one, one another one more thing there is also a point where you get maximum shear stress which point is this this point is just the peak of the circle and it occurs at this point okay so uh, it roughly occurs uh, at something let's try to rotate it let's see it occurs at uh, roughly 248 degrees and the value is 
minus seven uh, MPa for this uh, orientation. So similar to, but uh, note that at at for this location, the normal stresses are not necessarily zero. Okay, all but the shear 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 components attains a maximum possible value. So now we'll see the similar thing in for the three D case. So let's open open another app. So in this app, you can as you can see we have three circles. Okay, in in that in in the two D case we simply had a single circle. We have three circle because you can rotate your cube around three axis now. In that in the previous case you you, you could rotate your your square around just one axis that was that axis. So but here you can rotate around three axis, and what you'll get uh, if you rotate about any combination of these axes is point inside this green zone. Okay, so this is a stress cube that you will get. Okay, this is note that this is 3D, and these are the controls by which you can rotate the cube and you can plot the point on the mover circles. Okay, so this is some input stress tensor, and these are the specific uh, important values that is uh, uh, like the principal stresses in the principal direction, the maximum stress, shear stress, and etc. And uh, you also see the traction on on the plane. Like if you trace this plane with with the red arrow, red arrows, the traction on this plane is roughly twenty nine twenty two point nine uh, megapascals. And the current current stress tensor looks like, which is similar because we have not uh, changed the orientation. So if you change the orientation of this cube, okay, some random orientation, we'll see that the points on the Mohr circle will also change. And the component of the traction also changes. Okay, so this is now the current stress tensor. We started from this, and by doing specific orientations, like we have rotated the cube around y-axis by sixty degrees, on about z by roughly eighty or seventy degrees, and around x by ninety degrees. So we get this following orientation. Okay. So as you can see, in this figure, there are three more arrows. Uh, which are this brown dashed arrow, this blue dashed arrow, and this one, this green dashed arrow. These dashed arrows are nothing but the principal directions. So if you click this button, you will align your cube with the principal direction, and we expect that the shear components will be zero in this direction. So if you click this, you will see that all the shear components are zero, and only normal components are present. So what is what does this term represent? Thirty nine point two two nine is the normal component of the traction on this plane okay similarly 0 0.66 on this 33.63 on this and similarly you can trace these paths on the more circle to speed up the animation we'll switch off the animation for the cube and we'll try to animate just the more circle okay so currently we are using sign convention a note about sign convention that uh, these sign convention were actually are applicable to 2d cases and not to the 3d that's why mostly in in 3d we'll get uh, semicircles uh, the more circle is basically semicircles because we observe jumps if you use a similar sign conventions what we observe are jumps uh, when we uh, when you try to orient your planes as you'll see so let us try to rotate this now you can see that as specific points this points jump from one location to another okay like this so for time being what we'll do we'll we'll switch off this sign convention so so our points these points which actually represent the uh, state of stress or the components of the normal uh, and the shear traction on a plane of specific orientation will lie on the upper half only okay so if you now rotate it or the points will move only in the upper half as you can see, these points actually move from one principal circle to another principal circle as you keep on rotating. Okay. Yeah. So you can also try a simple 2D case when you put to make all these components zero. Okay. And then again plot it. Okay, we don't want to animate the cube right now. As you'll see, so if in 2D we rotate around z-axis, so you can rotate now around the z-axis. 
so without sign convention the variation looks something like this if you enable the sign convention so it then matches with what we did in the 2d case okay so this is how it behaves for the 2d case but if you rotate it's a similar cube around different directions okay the things changes okay so now the behavior is now totally different from what you observed in the 2d case if you rotate it the cube around your y or x axis and also observe that the maximum maximum shear stress is now uh, for example if you choose uh, 20 so you can see that in this case if you rotated the your cube around the z axis your points move on this circle okay but your maximum stress shear stress occurs on the other circle okay which is a circle uh, which is a circle that you obtain when you rotate around the y axis okay so uh, as you can see here that the maximum shear stress is nothing but 11.035 not something close to uh, 5 point something so this is these kind of stresses shear stresses are called out of plane shear stresses because since you are looking in 2d you tend to forget what's happening in other directions uh, but in actually actually even if there is no uh, uh, component of uh, uh, if, if you consider just these uh, 2d case and you just draw one more circle you'll tend to lose information and you'll uh, wrongly calculate the shear stresses so you need to calculate what are out of plane shear stresses considering rotation around other axis as well okay so that's it for this video you can download these files i've provided the link in the description and if there are few bugs i have not checked it thoroughly there could be bugs but uh, if you just uh, you know use it uh, wisely just inputting numbers and not doing not doing anything rough with the apps it would it should work just fine okay so that's it for this video thank you